let's assume you've created a lot of tutorials or a lot of videos using Blender. Maybe you want to showcase them in a special way that most people haven't done before. So in today's video, we're going to focus on creating a method to showcase different videos that you've already created, or it could be any video in fact, and just have them like a memory lane, as you can see over here. And it's more about the idea rather than the process. So with that, let's learn how we can create this. In our default scene, we're going to take the default cube and tap X to delete it. Then we'll press shift A and search for a mesh plane. And this plane is going to act as our floor. Now, just to help align things properly, I'll press tab to go into edit mode and then press GY1 so that the origin moves to the absolute edge over here. Then we can tab to go back to object mode and now we can scale it up on the Y axis by maybe 20 units. And of course, this distance will depend based on the number of actual videos that you have. And then you can press S, X, maybe three or four to give it some thickness as well. Once you have this set, we can rename this to floor. And now we can create some type of podiums or our different videos to be placed on. Now you can detail this with as much detail as you want. You could make cylindrical podiums. You could do a lot of things, but just to keep things simple, I'm just going to keep a plain cube, press seven to go into top view, then scale it down on the Y axis by maybe 0.4. And then I'll rotate it on the Z axis by 45 degrees. Now this is going to be my initial podium. I'll just press G X and move it to this corner over here. Then I'll press G Y and just bring it in by one unit. And now I want to duplicate this throughout this particular Y axis. So let's say every five units, I want one to be present. So I'll press Alt D to create a linked duplicate so that I can assign the materials and deal with that later on and then tap Y five so that it moves by five units. Now five units might also be two less for you. So maybe I'll go with another five units to move it by a total of 10 units. Now I'll just repeat the action. So it's Alt D Y 10. And I can do that again by pressing Shift R to repeat the action. Now my last cube came out. I don't want it to be out. So I'll select this and tap X and delete it. Next, I want to do the same thing for the left hand side, but I need them to be oriented in this sort of a slanting direction. So let's take this one, press Alt D X and now move it to this side. In this case, I'm going to have to move it by four units. And now I'll rotate it on the Z axis by 90 degrees and it's going to be oriented correctly. Now I don't want it to be exactly at the same line as this. I want it to be in between these two. So I moved it by 10 units. So this one I'm going to have to move initially by five units. So let's press G Y five. And this is the right position. Now I have to move the next one by 10 units. So I'll press Alt D Y 10 and then press Shift R to repeat the action as many times as required. So in this case, two more times and it's been created. Next up, I think all of these are a bit too high. So I'm going to just press one to go into my front view. And then I'll switch this button on to switch on transparency and just select all of these cubes and then press GZ and bring it down to something like that. Then you can switch it off again and you have your first setup. Now on each of these cubes, I want to place videos that I've created. Now you can do this by using an add-on called import images as planes. To install the add-on, you go to edit preferences, add-ons, and then search for import images as planes. Make sure that this is checked and then you can save preferences if you want to and you can close this window. Then you can press shift a image and now you'll have a new option called images as planes. Select that and choose the image or video that you want. So let's say I want this particular video that I've created before. I can go ahead and choose a few of the settings over here and I'm going to make sure that it's on emit so that I don't need any external lights to light it up and I can increase the strength to increase the bloom and make it look like it's actually radiating out light. So I'm going to change the strength to actually a default of three. And for the blend mode, since I don't want transparency, I'm just going to keep it on opaque and I'm going to change the shadow mode to none as well. Once I'm done with that, I'll click import images as planes. And now I'll have that image added in over here. Now I'll press RZ 45 to tilt it by 45 degrees and then press seven to go into my top view and just grab it. Make sure you press control and bring it to the center of this particular cube. Then you can press GZ to bring it up on the Z axis and then you can scale it up as well to whatever size you you feel fits. Remember, if you are scaling it up too much, it might come behind the wall. So that's why it's also a smart idea to take this floor and just scale it on the X axis by another 1.2 units so that there's a little bit of wiggle room as well. Now to see the actual video that you have, you can switch over to your viewport shading of rendered. And now you can see the video file that's present over here. Now to make things look a lot better, you can go ahead and set all of your defaults as well. So I'll just switch on ambient bloom and screen space reflections. And now I want to give this particular video its own border. So to do that, I'll press tab to go into edit mode. Then I'll go to my edge select mode over here. 
just select all of the edges, which should be selected by default, and then press Alt E and choose extrude edges. Once you extrude edges, we don't want it to actually move. So just right click and you'll have the extruded edges present right on top of the previous edges. Now you can press S and just scale them up till you get the size of the border that you actually want. So I think a border with this much thickness is good enough. So I'll leave it as is. And now I'll go to my face select mode and just shift Alt and select this face to select all of these faces. Once I have all of the faces selected, I'll press P and choose Choose separate by selection and now I can press tab to go into object mode and I have this border separated out. Now I don't want the border to have the same material so I'm going to go to the material properties, press this minus button to remove that material and press the new button to create a new material. I'll label this material as border and I'll leave it as is. I'll change the materials a bit later on but for now I need this border to actually have some thickness and look a lot better. So I'll just select my video image then shift select the border and press ctrl p set parent to object so that now I can move the border around and the image will follow along. Now since the border has been created it's going to actually clamp through the base. Now you could have it like that but I want it to be on top so I'll press GZ and just bring it up till it's resting on the base. Then I'll press tab to go into edit mode, select all of these faces, press E to extrude and just give it some thickness. And once you're happy with the thickness, you can press tab to go back into object mode, after which you can go to the modifier properties and add in a bevel modifier just to give these edges a nice bevel. So I'm going to increase the segments all the way to three or four, and I'm going to increase the amount as well to maybe 0.15. Once the bevel is done, I can go ahead and duplicate this for all of the different bases that we created. So let's shift select both of these and then press seven to go into my top view and then press shift D. Make sure that you're not making a linked duplicate because we will be changing the materials later on. So let's go ahead and just bring it to the right place. If you can't see properly, switch back to object mode and then do the same. So shift D Y and just bring it to the center. Again, shift D Y, bring it to the center. You could press shift R as well. Once you're done with the right hand side, press shift D X, bring it to this side, then R Z 90 and then G Y till it matches up perfectly with this one. Then again, shift D Y and bring it to match this one after which you can just press shift R and do that twice. Now if you actually go into your rendered view you can see you have the same video on every single one of the frames. Before we actually change each of them we'll go ahead and actually mess around with this particular video to make it exactly how we want. If you actually play the animation you see that it nicely rotates and you get the video as you want it to be but you have a few settings that you could play around with. So to play around with it, I'm going to go ahead and bring my cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window. And this time I'll change it to the shader editor. Now I'll take this image texture, move it to the side. And if you want, you can choose a start frame and you can choose an offset as well so that it starts from that particular frame. Apart from that, in case your video is small and you want it to repeat, make sure that you press this cyclic option and that way it'll loop instead of just stopping on the last frame. And since I have all of these videos as loops itself, I want to make sure that it's cyclic. Although for this showcase, I won't be bothered about making sure that the start frame is such that it loops and all of that. You can play around with it to make sure that everything loops later on. Another thing that I want to do is just increase the roughness all the way to one so that there's no unnecessary reflections in case a situation like that happens. So I'll just keep the roughness at one and that should be good enough for the material. Next, I want to change every single one of these videos. So I'll select the next plane, go to the materials over here and then just press this duplicate button to create a new material. And this time I'll just press this and open a different video. When you open a new video, you might have have the frames refresh back to one. So make sure you change that to the number of frames that are present in your video that you just imported. Another thing I didn't notice before, but when we did the bevel, we hadn't placed this properly. So before you actually duplicate all of these, it would have been smart to shift this from global to local and just press GZ and bring it back before we parent it as well. Since we've already parented it, I'm going to select my video file and then press GZ and bring it front so that there's no gap present at that edge. So now you see it looks much better but for all of these there's a small gap present here which I won't be fixing in this video but I'll fix just before I render it. However you can go and do the same thing for all of the videos. So now let's select this one, press this duplicate button to create a new material and then select whatever video you want and then change the number of frames to the number of frames that's present. Now if a video is too bright in general in that case you might want to change the actual emission strength but essentially play around with this until you make all of these their individual images. Once you're done with that we'll work with the actual materials for everything else in the scene. So let's start off with the borders. I want the borders to be much more metallic so that they have nice reflections. Maybe I'll give them a golden color. So I'll change the base color to this nice golden like color. 
I'll reduce the roughness down to 0.3 and to actually have these look much better. What I should have done before I actually duplicated it is right click and press shade auto smooth. So that way they'll be nice and smooth as well. Since I didn't do this before duplicating and these are not linked duplicates, I'll have to do that for every single one of them individually to make them look better. So once you're done fixing all of those issues, or in your case, you shouldn't have to make those issues itself. You can go ahead and play with the materials of these stands. So I'll create a new material. I'll call this stand and I'll make this one also very metallic. I'll keep it at the brightest white there is and reduce the roughness down to maybe 0.2. Then for these floor materials, Materials, I'll add in a new material, call it the floor, and then I'll make this one metallic as well, but I'll keep it fairly dark and I'll reduce the roughness to maybe 0.4. Next, I want this floor to also have walls. So I'll press tab to go into edit mode, go to edge select mode, select these two edges, press E, Z and move it up. And there we have these nice walls as well. Then I can press tab to go back to object mode. And there is some reflections coming in from the light. I'll select the light and just hide it for now. After which I can go ahead and place my camera. So I'll select my camera and then press all Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, and then R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees and then press G Z to move it up. But currently it's on the local axis. So I'll have to choose Y and bring it up like that. Now I'll press zero to go into my camera view and in my camera settings, I can change the focal length to whatever I want. So let's go with 25 to just make it a lot more wide angle. And then you can go to the viewport display and change passport out all the way to one. Now you can go ahead and set all of your animation defaults. So you'll change the frame rate to 30 frames per second in your output properties, change the end frame to 150 and change the output folder to wherever you want it to be. File format, we're going to choose FFmpeg video. And for the encoding container, I'll choose MPEG4 with an output quality of perceptibly lossless. Then with my camera selected, I'll tap I location, add in a keyframe for the location, after which I'll go to my last frame and just press G Y or since it's the local axis, I'll choose Z and just move it till we come to the absolute start, which should be the exact size by which you scaled the initial plane. So in this case, it'll have to be 40 units and I'll have to press Press minus and then tap I location. So that way your camera comes from the exact start to the exact end. You have to come down to the timeline and then tap T linear so that it becomes a smooth loop as it goes from the beginning till the end. Now the next thing that you would want to do is make all of these fit into a single collection. So let's select all of them and press M to move to a new collection and we can call this collection whatever you want. I'll just call it everything and then press OK. Now I don't want the camera to be present in this collection. So I'll select the camera and just move it out of this everything collection and move it back to the scene collection. Next, I'll press Shift A and go to collection instance and just choose everything and then press G Y and move it by 40 units. Then I'll repeat the action by again pressing Shift A, collection instance, everything, G Y and this time 80. Now you can always add in even more things like lights for every single one of these videos and essentially the things that you can do are limitless such as you can also go to your world properties and add in some ambient volume by searching for a volume scatter node and plugging this into the volume but to make sure that the volume isn't affecting anything nearby you can use the same technique that we've used in a previous video before which is actually searching for a gradient texture and then pressing ctrl t with the node wrangler switched on switching the texture coordinates to object and choosing the camera as the object and then plugging this into the density socket and for better control you can always use a color ramp present right here now what we want is there to be volume not from left to right but from front to back so we rotate it about the z-axis by 90 degrees and then we play around with the x location to make it the way we want and in this case it seems like the rotation wasn't supposed to be on the z-axis but it was supposed to be on the y-axis so let's rotate it by 90 degrees and now play around with the x-axis location until we get the volume the way we want it to be so right now it seems like the volume is dark near us and less dense away from us so we'll just flip the color ramp and now by playing around with the x we should have what we want so this way everything towards the back will fade away and you can always change this from a white which means max density or a density of one to a much lower value so that it's not that dense at the back so something like that seems fine and there's a nice fade out as we go towards the edge. Now with that, I think that's all there is to create this particular animation. Once you're happy with showing all of the videos that you have as a trip down memory lane or anything like that, you can go ahead and press render animation. Hopefully this one inspired you to create many different types of showcase reels or just a different way to store your memories of maybe a child growing up in different videos or maybe your own life story it's completely up to you have fun with this one and if you liked it be sure to check out other videos on my channel i upload a video every single day so until the next one comes out thank you so much for watching keep creating and stay creative